Hi guys and welcome to grade 12 Maths Learn Extra Live. Um, tonight's show is brought to you by Liberty and last week's trig was trig revision with Mark and as you can see um, Mark's back with us today. Um, Mark, so tonight is trig compound and double angles and Mark will be taking us through it. So t tell us a bit more about what we're going to be chatting sure, about. Sure, I'm going to be talking as Indiana said double angles, compound angle identities, I'm going to do some reduction formulae. I know that my own students at school are writing a big test on this tomorrow, so they're watching eagerly, but so a whole nation that want to do well at trig. So I think it's going to be a good lesson. Fantastic. So guys, send us questions relating to that topic, and next week we will be going over trig revision. Tonight, trig, compound, and double angles. Then after the break, we'll be working through an example or two. Lastly, we'll be tackling your questions on the page. That's facebook.com forward slash learn extra. Mm -hmm. Also on Twitter at learn extra. I think I should get Mark to learn some of these. Hey? Definitely. Hey, do you know no, them? no, not all of them. You've you got to tell all of your students. All of your students. Okay, guys, um, don't forget that we will be taking questions in the last 15 minutes of the show. We've also got this fantastic calculator. You can, you can even hold it up to give away. So, guys, get those questions in. Get those comments coming, and we'll be taking them after the break. See you then. Hi guys and welcome back to Maths Learn Extra Live. Finally it's your turn grade 12 because I know that you've all been watching the entire time. Um, and Bali was asking me where I've been. I haven't been anywhere guys. I was sitting um, back at the back of this. It's kind of cool. I get to sit with the director and the producer in the in the little room and I've been watching because Ty made his first debut. Well obviously that's what a debut um, <laughs> appearance is. So guys I am back. I'm not going anywhere. We are getting new presenters just to give me a little break and to mix things up and keep things interesting. So let me know what you thought and let me know how you think things are going. Chat to us on facebook.com forward slash learn extra. I am here and we are taking questions in the last 15 minutes of the show. Make sure that your questions are relating to the topic that we're chatting about and I can see Mark scratching his head because he just wants to get started. So Mark, mm. take it away. Oh, oh, before I forget, guys, check out his fancy tie. He's quite proud of it. So Mark, take it away. Thank you very much, Indiana. It's good to be back. Yes, everyone, this is my maths tie with a whole lot of equations, and I've checked that all of them make sense. But enough about that. Let's get on to what we're doing tonight. As I said, we're going to look at compound angles, double angles, and some applications. Okay, so let's dive in and see what I've put up here. The first thing that I'm going to do is a very quick revision is the sine expansion. Now the wonderful thing if you look very closely is that the sine expansion, okay, first of all always keeps its sine. So when you're expanding sine, it'll keep the same sine. Look over there, there's a negative in between and that will give me a negative in between. But the other interesting thing is that the sine does a bit of an alternating trick. So we go sine cos cos sine and you'll see that the angles alternate so it goes sine of the first cos of the second then it's going to be cos of the first sine of the second and that's true irrespective of the sine inside that just gives me the middle sign now you don't have to panic or phone a mechanic that is given to you on the metric formula sheet but I really I strongly urge you to memorize this so that you can do it without looking at the metric formula sheet that means then that you're properly prepared so I'm going to dive into a couple of illustrations just to show us what we mean. So the very first thing we say, I'm saying over here is to please go and expand that. Now I've got the sign, 30 in the brackets, minus 20. I'm saying go and expand that just because I'm trying to illustrate what we mean here. Please don't ever distribute the sign. That sign is not a number. It's not a value. It cannot distribute. And what we mean when we expand it is that we we'll get the sign of the first, Okay, then I get the cos of the second, keep the sine in between, and then it's going to be cos of the first, and then sine of the second. And that there is the expansion in terms of that sine um, compound angle formula. So here is a nice example. And if we are asked to work out the sine of 75 without the use of a calculator, and when we say work it out, we say evaluate in mathematics. I'm saying evaluate. Give me a final, final answer for this. So one of the things that you should recognize is that this 75 can be expressed in terms of our special angles from grade 11. And when I'm talking special angles, I'm actually saying, well, 75 is the same as 45 plus 30. So I can break down that sine of 75. Let me show you what I mean. 
So if I've got the sine of 75, that can be written as a sine of 45 plus 30. Now I need to use the special sine expansion. So it's not multiplying in, but it's distributing in the way that I've just shown you. Okay? And so what I'm going to get over here is the sine of the first multiplied by the cos of the second. Then we're going to keep the sine. That's how sine works. Then it's going to be cos of the first multiplied by the sine of the second. And the really nice thing about what we've got to over here now is that these are special angles. And so every single one of these can be evaluated by using your knowledge of special angles. But if you really want to cheat a little bit, you can use a calculator which will give you the correct answer. So I'm just going to tie it up for you. The sine of 45 is going to be root 2 over 2. The cos of 30 is root 3 over 2. Um, cos of 45, well that's exactly the same as sine of 45 which is going to be root 2 over 2, and the sine of 30 is 1 half. And then if I just tie everything up together, I can see that I'm going to get the same denominator. Okay, that denominator will be 4, that denominator will be 4. To save myself a little bit of time for later on the show, I'm going to leave out a step. Multiplying the tops will give me root 6, and then multiplying those tops is going to be, give me root 2, and I've got root 6 plus root 2. But more than anything else, what I really want to show you viewers at home is how you can actually use this rule to go and evaluate something which is not a special angle. So in grade 12, when we learn about the compound and double angle formulae, quite often we're taking our special angles, which are 30, 45, and 60, and we're combining them together by adding or subtracting to go and create new special angles. Okay, I'm going to dive in and carry on a little bit further. And what we're going to do is we're going to go and look at the cos expansion. Now the cos in a way is similar to the sine in that you're not multiplying in, but you're expanding based on a very, very special rule. Okay, so the sooner you learn this rule, the better you're going to be. But what cos does is that the sine in between the terms changes. And I always just think cos with a C and C stands for change. Okay, beautiful. So we're going to change the signs with the cos expansion. So from a minus in between, when I go and expand it, I'll see a plus in the middle of those terms. But the other interesting thing is that the cos has a bit of a stut stut stutter. Okay? So when you're seeing cos, it goes cos, cos, sin, sin. So when we do the cos expansion, we're going to see a cos, cos. So it's cos of the first, cos of the second. And then I'm going to go and do sin of the first, sin of the second. But again, that's theory. That's on your matric formula sheet. That's something that you should be learning or at least know how to apply. Now, when we play with our examples, sometimes it's very important to go and expand. But other time, it's also important to go and contract. So when we see something like I put up on screen here, so I've got the cos of 40, cos of 50, sine of 40, sine of 50. If I say go and evaluate without the use of a calculator, that again always says to me, they're going to be special angles, or if there are no special angles, I'm looking for a special trick. So I look at this and I say, well, I can't work out 40, and I can't break down 40 into the sum or difference of special angles, and, and neither can I do that with 50. But what I do notice, and that's what every single one of you at home needs to notice, is that you've got this little stutter. Cos, cos, sign, sign. Sounds like a train, isn't it? Cos, 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 cos. Sign, 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 sign. How beautiful is that? And so what we're going to do is we're going to recognize that we've got the special pattern. But what makes it even more special is that we've got the same angles repeated. So I'm seeing the 40, 40, and then I'm going to see the 50, 50. And it's this point now that I can say, hang on, that is a cos expansion. But now I'm going to contract it. And so I go and write, this is the cos and I'm always putting in the two angles that I'm seeing. So I'm seeing a 40 and I'm seeing a 50. But please remember that with the cos, we change the sign. So when I put it back inside, I'm changing the sign between them. Okay, so notice it has changed. When I'm playing with sign, it keeps the sign. Cos changes the sign. I can work in my bracket. Cos of 40 plus 50 is actually the cos of 90. 
And the cos of 90 is a very special angle, which we should know from grade 11. Again, if you don't believe me, you can always press on a calculator. So I'm going to say the cos of 90 is 0. But if I wasn't sure, let's pull up my calculator. Okay, so I'm going to go and press the cos of 90. Check my answer. And yes, it is zero. So I'm quite convinced that I was right. And then I can go and put in my answer. So let's quickly put it in. And hopefully at this stage, you're starting to remind yourself, if you're very new to this, or if you're quite familiar and you've done it at school already, you're saying, I remember those rules. Mark, give me something a bit more challenging so I can apply my knowledge. So I hear you. So let's try something a little bit more challenging. So the first challenge question that I want to give all of the viewers at home tonight is this one up here. And it says, evaluate without the use of a calculator. Now, if you've listened to anything I've said tonight, and I hope that you're sitting on the edge of your seats, you know that without a calculator means that I'm looking for special angles, or there's a trick. Now, none of these have got special angles, but there is going to be a trick. But have a look and see how I've disguised this whole thing. I've mixed it up. I've made it look more difficult than it needs to be. Because when I look, I'm seeing sine, cos, cos, cos. I'm saying, hang on, that's not one of the sine or the cos expansions. And then when I look at the angles, there is nothing repeated. So my challenge to you in the break is to see if you can try and unravel something. There is something very special in what we always, always, always say is convert your angles to acute angles first. So see if you can convert all the angles to acute and then it's something will be happening. India, Indiana, I'd like to let them have a little break, if you don't mind, and then we'll see how many people come up with the answers, and then we'll dive into it after the break. All right. Fantastic, guys. So, guys, we're going to take a little break, and you know what that means. It's little mini challenge time. So get those questions, well, get those answers in. Guys, help each other out on the page. Um, Kashifa, Dufuno, I know there's a whole bunch of you that like to help others out, and I think that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So get busy on the page. Help each other out. Be a mindset, and we'll be back with you straight after this break. Hi guys and welcome back to Maths Learn Extra Live. It's grade 12. Finally it's your turn. I know there's a whole bunch of you that have been watching since grade 10. I just want to say a big shout out to the usuals, my Anele, I can't say my, <laughs> Anele, Kashifa, um, let me have a look who else, Noxopedia, like you know who you all are guys. Um, and I think it's fantastic. Get those questions in. We are going through them in the last 15 minutes of the show. Please make sure they are relevant um, to the topic that Mark is going over. Um, and before I start talking too much, which happens a lot, let's, let's, let's give Mark a turn. Mark, take it away. Thanks a lot, Indiana. While we're giving little shout outs and that kind of stuff, I just want you to say that Nana Betts contacted me after the show. She's 93 and watched last week. She enjoyed the trick. So I really am um, interested to see if we have any older viewers. If there's anyone older than 93 that watches the show, please get hold of Indiana. Yeah. Or teachers. Yeah, even. teachers as well. But 93 year old doing trick is fantastic. And she's put a challenge to me to go to her bridge club to work through her matric paper of 1943. So I look forward to that. Yeah, let's dig That's in the amazing. archives. But let's go back to our challenge question over here. Remember we said evaluate without the use of a calculator. Now I hope that you viewers at home were watching last week because last week what I did is a bit of revision of the grade 11 leading into grade 12. And when we were doing that revision we said one of the most important things we need to be able to do is convert angles. Okay, from an angle in a different quadrant to take it back as an equivalent acute angle. So I want to keep my ratio the same, but I, I want to have an acute angled ratio. So I'm going to go and play around just a little bit before I get into my answer. And hopefully all of you will remember if I'm talking 110. So let's go to a little cast diagram that I suggested that you draw on the side of your page. And what I notice is that 110 is inside the second quadrant. And remember in that second quadrant, we're talking about 180 minus theta. That's the reduction formula for there. So I know that 110 can be written, okay, as 180 minus 70. That's just a little note to myself that I would normally write in pencils, just to help me visualize where I'm at. Also over here, this 290, that's in a different quadrant. So if I go all the way through, here's 90, there is 180, there is 270, 
there is 360. I can see that 290 is somewhere inside this quadrant over here, in the fourth quadrant. And so I know that I can write that as 360 minus theta. So I can write this as 360 minus 70. When I go and play with the cos, 290 is the same as 360 minus 70. The other two angles I'm going to leave alone because those are both acute angles and my first initial approach is to try and get everything as acute angles. Then I'm going to look for relationships and see if it's a sine expansion or a cos expansion. So let's just go through. I don't want to go too quickly. So I would write this now sine of 180 minus 70 and that was multiplied by the cos of 10 minus, now I've got the cos of 360 minus 70 and that there is multiplied by the cos of 80. Now I can go and reduce. So when I've got the sine, 180 minus will take me to sine of the acute angle but then I just go into its quadrant and I know that in this quadrant sine is positive in the second quadrant so my answer is going to be positive multiply there by the cos of 10 and then I'm going to work out the cos of 360 minus 70 so again I go into my quadrant which is the fourth quadrant but the nice thing cos is also positive there so that answer cos of that is going to be cos of 70 and so because it's positive I still just keep the sign outside so I'm going to put my sign outside and that there is a negative cos of 70 and then I'm going to go and multiply by the cos of 80. Now again I've got to look very carefully because you know it's unraveling but not beautifully just yet and that's where you mustn't give up. You must just say to yourself well what is the same and if I can get things that are the same leave them the same. The things that are different we're going to try and change. So I'm going to highlight those things that, that are the same and I hope that you try that at home. So when you've got the sine of 70 and I've got the cos of 70, well that's the same thing. So that's quite nice. But I've got here the cos of 10 and I've got there the cos of 80. Now they are different but I can convert them because what I'm wanting to see is a repeated angle. There's a 70 and a 10. There's a 70. You know what? I can change that cos of 80. And if you remember that little rule from grade 11 of the co-functions, the cos of 80 is the sine of 10. Go back to last week's show and I played with that quite a bit. So let's just expand my page. So I'm now going to go and say, well, this is the sine, okay, sine of 70 times by the cos of 10. Then I've got minus cos of 70. And now cos of 80 I'm making sine of 10 and we should see something special we notice that there is a 10 and there is a 10 and then I've also got over here a 70 and a 70 so now I'm ready to go and contract this thing together by saying if it's repeating and I'm going sine cos cos sine that is a sine expansion and so I know that it's going to be sine, and now I've put in my two angles that were repeated. You see, you have to see the repeated angles. So I'm going to put in the 70, and I'm going to put in the 10. But can you remember what sine is going to go in between those terms? Sine keeps its sine. Cos changes it. So if sine keeps its sine, I'm going to see a negative inside, which now that works out beautifully to give me the sine of 60. And I've taken something that was so mixed up and higgledy-piggledy and I've been able to contract it to get it in terms of the function of a special angle. And again, if you've forgotten, use your calculator, but that answer is going to be root 3 over 2. And that's worked out beautifully. So I'm just going to quickly gloss over again for those of you at home, because in the break, Indiana said a few people are writing in and saying, Mark, slow down. So I'm going to slow down a little bit. <laughs> Deep breaths. Deep breaths. <laughs> Have a look. The angles are all different. It doesn't matter what aspect of trig you are doing. Try to rewrite things in terms of functions, equivalent functions of an acute angle. Once everything is acute, 
then you can look to see what you can do. And if it's not entirely right, well, use your special relationship where the sine of an angle is equal to cos of the complementary angle. And then you're able to get it into your pattern. And as soon as it's in one of those patterns, it's either going to go cos, cos, sine, sine, or it's going to go sine, cos, cos, sine. Repeated angles, absorb it in, bobs you onto. There we go. Okay, so these are the compound angles. What I'm now going to look at next is what we call the double angle identities. And this expansion is very interesting. Again, all of this is given on the matric formula sheet for you, so you don't have to memorize it, but you know my advice. Try to, to learn this thing. So if you've got sine of twice an angle, so any angle can be written as two times that angle, well then the answer is going to be two times sine of the angle times cos of the angle, where this angle and that angle is half of your original angle. So I'm now going to go and illustrate this rule for you. So if you've got the sine of 80, you know that you can represent the sine of 80. If I use this, well, 80 is actually the same as 2 times 40. Okay, so I know that that's 2 times 40. So then I can write this as 2 times sine of half the angle. So if the angle's 80, half the angle is 40. So it's 2 sine of 40, the cos of 40. Okay, and it looks relatively easy. Okay, but we're going to get to some nastier stuff a bit later on. But all that I do is I'm halving the angle, but I must see that two outside. So when you've got the sine of any angle, you can go and expand it as two times sine of half the angle multiplied by cos of half that angle. And now I'm going to go play with that sine of 4x and do exactly the same thing. So think carefully. Instead of a numerical value, I can now go and write this as 2 multiplied by the sine of half of that angle. Half of 4x is 2x and that is all multiplied by the cos of that same half an angle. But you know what? I'm going to do something a bit more creative. I'm going to go a little bit further. I mean I'm just trying to show the rule. But who's to say that I should have stopped there? Because if I look again, so I'm going to look at the sign and we're just going to play around because we're doing a bit of extension. I can actually expand inside that sign of 2x. Now remember that you've got a 2 outside, so let me just try and help you by color coordinating this. So I've got a 2, and outside there I've got a cos 2x. And so if I want to, I can actually now say, well this sine of 2x, when it expands, it's always 2 multiplied by sine of half the angle. So it's sine of x multiplied by cos of that same angle which is half of that. Okay, and so I've just expanded, if I really want to, I can go put this whole thing together, multiply the numbers, which would then be a 4. I'm going to get sine x, and I am going to run out of space, cos x, all multiplied by the cos of 2x. So for me there, I was just trying to illustrate how this double angle expansion works and that we don't have to just expand it once. I mean, you remember in grade 9 when you learned about difference of squares, you can do things many times if you just apply the rule very carefully. And here is just another example below where I have got a relationship. And what you've always got to recognize with all of this is that we're trying to get the angles to look the same. Because if the angles are looking the same, I'm working with the same angle, then I can contract or I can expand or I can do a whole lot of things. And so here I've got 2 sine of 12 multiplied by the cos of 12. I can contract that. Why don't I? And so if we know that when we are expanding, it's 2 times the sine of half the angle cos of half the angle, I can take it back. The 2 is there, so this becomes the sine of 2 times the angle that I was dealing with, which is the same as the sine of 24. Have a look how you can expand it and then contract it. And very often, for some reason, the students find it much easier to expand, but to be able to contract is such an important skill, especially when you're doing identities, especially when you're solving trig equations. I hope that's making sense. I don't know if you're getting any feedback there, Indiana. Well, I actually am. Um, I was wondering if we would be able to do a little question session because there's quite a few questions that are coming through 
on the page. Fantastic. Let me carry on a little bit further, and when we get to an ad break, maybe I can pull some of those from you and we can do those. All right. Fantastic. That's okay. a good idea. See, Mark's full of those good ideas. Sorted. Here is another example. So I'm saying evaluate. Evaluate without a calculator. And hopefully you're saying, oh, Mark, you've just actually muddled this thing up a bit, but you're starting to recognize that we are operating on the same angle. And so when I am operating on the same angle, I've got a 2 cos 2 sine. I could have seen it as 2 times the sine of 75. And I'm sure many of you are saying, oh, you don't need to do that, Mark. I know I don't need to, but sometimes it's more recognizable for some of the viewers at home. If it's two sine of an angle cos of the same angle, that is exactly the same as sine of double that angle. And when I do 2 times 75, that is now the sine of 150. Now we know from earlier, don't panic. It's not an acute angle, but you could very easily write that as an acute angle, which is 180 minus 30. And so this now is going to be the sine of 30 degrees. But because this is in my second quadrant, so if we just look, it's there in the second quadrant where sine is always positive. I know that the answer is going to be positive. Sine of 30, special angle, that's a half, and everybody's happy. All right. I'm, I'm flying, all right, Indiana. I know that we want to get to your question, so I'm just trying you just to go fly. through. You just fly. Fantastic. I'm going to go through this last one, and then we're going to go to an ad break. All right. And for those of you at home, have a look at it. Maybe dive in. See if you can do something before I unravel. But almost certainly, as I said last week, as I'm going to say every time I ever teach trig, so much of your trig relies on your ability to do decent algebra. And so I can see that I've got some trig stuff inside, but I have a power outside. And I'm squaring a binomial. And when you square a binomial, you can do this in one of two ways. You can either choose to write the bracket out twice, or you can say to yourself, if you're using the shortcut inspection, then you must remember your middle term. Because if you don't remember your middle term, you're going to be in trouble. So I'm going to go and expand this. Okay, I'm going to do the shortcut method. So what I do is I square the first. Be careful how you write it, because that means the sine of 15 times the sine of 15. It's sine of 15 squared. Never go and square an angle. That's not what that means. Plus, then I'm going to say 2 times the inner product. That's how we square a binomial. That's nothing new from algebra, and we've been doing that since grade 9. So it's 2 times the sine of 15 multiplied by the cos of 15. And then I'm going to add the very last term squared which now is the cos of 15, and that whole thing is squared. Now we look at this, and I don't want you ever to panic and just try and do something because. Do something because there's a purpose behind it. And I can recognize something. I'm recognizing something about the middle term, but I'm sure the outer two terms are causing lots of grief outside. You at home are thinking, oh my word, how am I going to work out cos squared of this angle I can expand it forever in a day, and I'm still not going to get there. So I want to let you know that those two, we're talking true love now, okay? This sine squared and that cos squared were meant to be together. It's like a special bond. They were meant to be together as one. How poetic is that? So you know that sine squared plus cos squared of the same angle always give you one. So when you've got a sine squared, always look to see if you've got a cos squared at the same angle. Pair them up. Make them into one. Okay? Allow for true love to blossom on your maths page. And then I can add the next two things. So that's one plus two sine of 15 times by the cos of 15. So I'm getting closer. I know that I've got rid of those nasty squares. And I am excited because I've managed to have some love on my page. But it's this bit over here that hopefully you're remembering. Two sine of an angle cos of the same angle. That's just what we we're talking about. That's a sine double. And so I can go and merge that into one thing. So this is going to be 1 plus sine of 30. Because it's double the inner angle. And I've just shown you the sine of 30 on the other page. So I don't need to go again and do it slowly. That's 1 plus a half. You can write that as 1 and a half. 3 over 2, they're exactly the same answer. All right. So go slowly. Use your knowledge of algebra, but look for patterns. You're always looking. Have a total awareness for patterns. Indiana, over to you. 
Fantastic. Okay, guys, so we do have, I know there's a whole bunch of you that have asked some questions on our page. We're going to take a quick break. Keep those questions coming. I am chatting to Mark during the break. And what he's going to do is he's going to take a whole bunch of your questions and hopefully he can go through um, all of the questions and answer all of your questions in one foul swoop. So let's take a break and we'll see you in two seconds. Hi guys and welcome back to Learn Extra Live and this is Maths Grade 12. I hope you're all having a fantastic session. Um, I just wanted to remind you about the calculator. Don't forget that um, the best comment wins and we will be posting the winners on the page tomorrow um, for you to see. So don't forget to check back for that. Um, I just want to say Peter Motse said, Indy, when dealing with um, cos expansion, instead of using C for change, we could say cos means um, change of sign. So yeah, Peter, that's absolutely correct, and Mark's just getting the board ready for us. I think he's going to go through a few questions that I spoke to him about during the break. Mark, you ready? Yeah, I'm perfect. Fantastic. Thanks, Indiana. Well, th there were lots of questions that came through in the break, but all of them really about reduction formally, and most people were saying, when I was working earlier, did I have to go to sign? Could I have done the cos? There were other questions also relating to the cos double angle expansion. That's the very next thing that I'm going to do. So I'm going to ask you to hold off for me to do those questions until I've shown the cos double angle and then I will go to some of the other questions. But let's look at this one again because when I unraveled it the first time, I made it into sine, cos, cos, sine. And someone said, couldn't you have done that as cos of a double? And of course you can. So I'm going to show you how we could do this. So I've rubbed out almost everything except for at the beginning when I said 110 can be written as 180 minus 70. So that is the same as sine of 70. Remember, same principle, try and get everything to an acute angle. Over here, I've got this as the cos of 10. Then it was going to be minus. Then over here, I have got the cos of 70 all multiplied by the cos of 80. Now, if I want to try and get this thing to be a cos expansion, what I am trying to see is cos cos followed by sine sine. Okay, so I need to somehow change things. But I want to remind you of an important rule because I think that came through a little bit in the break that people can't remember this rule. If you have, for example, the sine of 70, that is the same as the cos of 20 because the angles will add up, add up to 90. If you change sine to cos, and you can, you can always just change sine to cos or cos to sine so long as those angles are complementary. All right, so complementary just means they add up to 90. So I could rub that out. Let me, let me give you another illustration. Take that away. There we go. So if I just put whatever I wanted to do, Okay, 50. Then I would need to see cos of 40. Because if those add up to 90, then that's fine. So I can change in my exam anywhere sine of 50 to cos of 40. And I'm allowed to do that, and that's mathematically correct. So what I'm going to do now, because I want an expansion to be cos cos, well, I'm going to change that to cos. So the sine of 70, and I'm sure you're all shouting out at home. Shout loud so I can hear you. Exactly. Okay, so the sine of 70 is cos of 20. And there I've got the cos of 10. Now I want to change cos to sine because I wanted cos, cos. So I'm looking for that pattern. Everything is beautiful patterns. And the cos of 70 will take me now to the sine of 20. And then cos of 80 is going to take me to sine of 10. So I'm just using that rule but notice again that I've got my repeated pattern. So there's my 20, there's my 20, there is my 10, there is my 10. And so it's a cos expansion. Now remind me the gentleman that phoned us earlier on, I mean he was on uh, your feed earlier on, he said when I've got the cos, he says to us that cos stands for the change in sign. So I've got the 20 and I've got the 10. Cos stands for the change in sign. Boom, cos of 20 plus 10, cos of 30, and that is a special angle, which is root 3 over 2. And I can remember from earlier, it's exactly the same answer. 
but I've approached it totally differently because I've gone and done the cost. So it answers the question of the viewers, could I do it as cost? You can always do it as cost. You can do it as a sign. As I've said before on this show, there are many different ways to milk chickens. All right. So I'm going to dive into where I wanted to get to next, and I'm going to go to the double angle cause expansions. Okay, so have a look here. And generally speaking, this is the one that presents the biggest challenge to our students. Because what happens with COS is that there are three different ways in which it can go and expand. Now look closely, because it doesn't just happen. There is a special relationship. If you've got COS of any angle, you can expand it in a certain way by halving the angle. 2x going to x means that it's half. So it's COS squared of half of that minus sine squared of half of that. But there is another way, and again, you look at that relationship of the angle. So it's 2 cos squared of half that angle minus 1. But remember, sometimes you're going to contract it. So if you see 2 cos squared of an angle minus 1, you can take it back to cos of double whatever angle you've got. And then the third one, again, we'll notice that we've got that half of an angle, cos of 2x is 1 minus 2 sine squared of half the angle. So I just want to show you a little bit how I would go and expand the rule. I'm not really doing anything specific other than showing what we could do here. So for example, if I've got cos of 20, and if I went to the top expansion, that is the same as the cos squared of half that angle. So that would be 10 degrees minus sine squared of half of that angle. Now just a little piece of advice for some stage later on, not tonight's show, but understand that that is a difference of two perfect squares. Over there, that cos double angle, which gives you cos squared minus sine squared of an angle, that's a difference of two squares. Remember your algebra, look to factorize if you ever need to factorize. Now cos of 20, I can also go and expand it if I'm using the middle expansion, which would say it's two cos squared of half of your angle. So half of 20 is 10, 10 degrees minus 1. And then there is a third expansion which I can go write in terms of sine. And so that will be 1 minus 2 sine squared of half the angle. Remember, you can expand and you can contract. And you need to be able to swing both ways. All right. Now, let's look at some other examples. My next example says, can you please expand this cos 10x in terms of cos only? That means I have to go to the cos expansion. That's where you'd look at your formula sheet, or hopefully you would remember. So I'm just going to help you out. If you've got the cos of 2x, that is the same as 2 cos squared of half the angle minus 1. So if I'm going to take the cos of 10x, that is going to be 2 cos squared of half of my angle. Well, half of 10x is 5x. And then I must remember to write minus 1. So hopefully that makes sense. And then let's look at the second example that I've put up there on page. And it says, if you've got 1 minus 2 sine squared of 20, reduce it to a single trig function. Well, when I'm getting it to a single trig function, I'm just seeing a sine or just seeing a cos of an angle. But the beauty of it all is that this is one of those expansions. 1 minus 2 sine squared of an angle. Well, if I just remind myself, cos of 2x is 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. Look at the relationship of the angles. When I take it back, I double whatever angle I've got. So 1 minus sine squared of any angle, when I take it into the cos, it doubles that angle. So if I got 1 minus sine squared of 20, when I bring it back, that is going to be the cos of double that angle. And that there is then going to give me the cos of 40 degrees. Okay, good. I hope that you're getting the basics and that they're starting to make some sense. See, let's just go to our next page. And here are some other examples that I want to play with. So again, evaluate without the use of a calculator. You almost certainly are looking for special angles, but I know cos squared minus sine squared. I'm going to contract it into a cos. I'm going to double my angle. So that is going to become cos, okay, cos of double 15, which is going to be the cos of 30 degrees. 
and the cos of 30 is root 3 over 2. I keep coming to that nice special angle. H is a real trick. It's a bit nasty. So let me just not lose it on the screen. When you look at H, there's something ugly about it. Look very, very closely. Okay? Because if you were paying attention earlier on, you will see that again, I've disguised it. Because if you've got the cos of 2x, the cos of 2x should become 2 cos squared of half that angle minus 1. Try to see the difference because there's something significantly different here. And you should notice that the signs are all mixed up. Instead of seeing positive 2 cos squared minus 1, you've got a negative 2 cos squared plus 1. And so that's where algebra comes in. You see, this law here for the double angle expansion cannot change. The law is fixed. So sometimes what you need to do is you need to manipulate and change something to look a little bit nicer. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the sign outside and I have a little saying always in class. And I say change the sign outside to change the signs inside. So I change the sign outside and then inside it will become negative 1 plus 2 cos squared of 22,5. And if I just pull my screen down a little bit, I want to rearrange. I don't like the way how it looks inside. So I'm going to rewrite it as 2 cos squared of 22,5 minus 1. And now that is perfect. But that's exactly what I want to see. I've got 2 cos squared of x minus 1. So when I take it back, it becomes cos of double the angle that I was dealing with. So on the outside, I've still got my negative. But inside, when I double 22 and a half, that's given me cos of 45. And now that's when you start breathing a sigh of relief. That's a special angle that works out beautifully, which is negative root 2 over 2. So please remember, the little skill that I'm trying to show you here is that if it's not quite exactly as you need to see it and that the signs are all the wrong way around, Take out a negative. So you can change the signs inside, evaluate what's inside in the normal possible way, keeping your sign on the outside. And now what we want to do is we want to go to identities. So I'm going to show you how these double angles actually immerse themselves into all of trigonometry in grade 12. So everything that you learned in grade 11, like solving the equations, doing the reduction formulae, going to identities, you're suddenly going to see a different relationship between the angles. And so what we're going to have to try and do is say, what can I do with that double? And what can I do with that double so that I can go and unravel? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this with you, but I need you at home to pay special attention. Because when I finish this, we're going to go to an ad break and I'm going to show you a challenge question. And I want you to try it on your own to see if you can apply some of the knowledge that we've learned. So, I'm going to start with the left hand side. Last week I said to you, start with the harder looking side. Because this easier side, well there's nothing you can really do. So you start with the harder side and you start unraveling it. So I'm going to go to the left hand side. Oops. And I know that I've got a cos double angle minus a cos at the top. So I just want to wait with the cos double. I'm not entirely sure where I'm going yet. So it's okay to just hold off for a while. The sine double is much easier because it can only go one way. Sine of a double angle is going to then be 2 times sine of half the angle cos of half that angle plus the sine of x. Now you know that this is going to be an algebraic fraction and when we've got an algebraic fraction we're going to be factorizing. So you know you're going to have to do some factorizing at some stage. Now I'm looking and I don't just look this side. I also look at the other side all the time and say, where am I going to? So I'm going to end up with sine of x eventually at the bottom. Stuff will cancel out, but the top has no signs. The top is just going to be coses, so that's a huge hint to me saying, when you expand cos 2x, if you've looked on the other side, I'm going to expand it as the cos only. And so that becomes 2 cos squared of half of that angle minus 1. Okay, so I'm going to keep going a little bit and I'm going to see where I can go to with this. Now the whole idea behind algebraic fractions from grade 10 is that you're always trying to go and factorize. So I'm seeing something nice at the bottom and I'm seeing that there is a common sign. Take out a common sign and that will leave me with 2 cos x 
plus one. Now, if you look at the original question and if you look where I'm at, I can see sine at the bottom, sine at the bottom, which means that this thing is going to cancel out at some stage. I'm going to hope it cancels and we're going to see what happens. So I'm looking to find a common bracket of that at the top. I'm looking at the top and hang on, it's mixed up. Let me rearrange. I can see that that's going to be a trinomial. So minus cos of x, rearrange to make it look nicer. That trinomial is going to factorize for me. Hopefully it's going to factorize nicely. So when I go to the top, I'm going to get 2 cos x, cos x, I'm going to get plus 1, I'm going to get minus 1, I'm going to double check now, I've got the sine of x, I've got 2 cos of x plus 1, and then I can see, okay, this whole bracket that whole bracket cancels. Ah, I can see we've got an answer, which is going to give me cos of x minus 1 all over sine of x, which was equal to the right-hand side. And remember from last week I said, please, you must always go and conclude. I am aware that we're running out of time, and my producer said to me, I've kind of got six and a half minutes left. So I'm going to dive to my last slide. And this is my challenge question, my last challenge question, where you have to go and prove this identity. So I'm asking all of you to please write it down very quickly. Sine of 3x over sine of x minus cos of 3x over cos of x. And we haven't to prove it's equal to 2. So I hope that all of you at home are saying, I'm definitely working with the left-hand side. Let's go and see where we go. So Indiana, we've got time for one ad break quickly. Yes, yes. Okay, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick ad break, and that's, that gives me enough time to put this question onto the Facebook break. Facebook break. <laughs> you know what? Let's take a break, and we'll get back to, get, get back to the question we get back from the break. See you now. Hi guys and welcome back. Can you believe that we have entered the last six minutes of our show? I know it's amazing how time flies and I know that you're all sitting on the edges of your seats. Okay guys, I know we've got so many questions and I think the best remedy for this is for all of us to work through Mark's question together. And then if you still have any questions, then we can get the help desk to help you out or to help each other on the page. Guys, I know one hour seems like too short, but let's get straight to it. And I have posted the Facebook question, well, the question onto Facebook. That's facebook.com forward slash learn extra. Straight, let's get back to Mark and let's work through it together. See you now. Thanks, Indiana. Now, for this last little segment, we're going to solve this identity. And what I've said over here, LCD add fractions. You must remember that when you are adding fractions, well don't change it because it's trig. The algebra says to me that adding fractions you get the same denominator. So just to try and reinforce something, if I look at these denominators, the LCD is actually going to be sine x cos x. When I combine the two denominators, I want a, a lowest common denominator sine x cos x, which means I times this bottom by cos x times your top by cos x. I'm going to times this bottom by sine of x times this top by sine of x. And now the next step, obviously, when you're adding fractions, is to go and put everything over the same denominator. So I'm going to put it over the same denominator, which is going to be sine x cos of x. So at the top, I'm seeing sine 3x cos of x minus cos of 3x times by the sine of x. Now stop and look. And I want to hear the penny drop. Look at the relationship between these. Because you've got a sine cos, cos sine. So don't go and do anything just because. Look at it and say, well, what should I be doing? Where can I go? The angles are repeated. So don't overcomplicate. I'm seeing 3x, 3x. I'm seeing x, x. It's going sine, cos, cos, sine. I know that I can go and contract it. I'm going to absorb it together. And hopefully we remember that if you've got the sine, cos, cos, sine, that is a sine expansion. So now I put my two angles together. So I've got a 3x and I've got an x. And sine keeps the sine. And that there is all over sine of x 
cos of x. Now on the top, the next obvious logical thing I'm going to do is say, well, 3x minus x is 2x. So at the top, I've got sine of 2x and I've got the sine x cos x. Now don't do anything silly like cancelling out the word sine. I've got to say, well, where can I go? Hang on. Sine of 2x is a double angle expansion. We saw that tonight. And we know that we can go and expand the sine of 2x. And that is 2 sine of half the angle times cos of half the angle all over sine of x, cos of x. And then we can say, ah, sine cancel with sine, cos cancel with cos. That is equal to 2, which is equal to the right hand side. And Bob's your auntie. Okay, so remember, go slowly, look for the patterns, and you'll be okay. Practice, practice, practice. Indiana, I think we have to wrap it up, so I'm going to hand over to you. Goodbye to the viewers from me. Guys, I can't believe how fast the show goes. I know that you've all said the exact same thing. It's crazy, and I know that the page has been going crazy with, with questions and answers. Guys, when the show ends, please, please help each other out. I know that there are a whole bunch of you that do that already. Um, let me have a look. I know Noxipedia and Nisa, you guys are all fantastic in doing that. And the more mindsetters, the better. So grade 12s, you've been so fantastic. I've thoroughly enjoyed this show and I hope that you all did too. Um, yeah, we'll see you same time, same place next week. Bye, mindsetters.